endocrine disruptors are mostly man-made chemicals that interfere in the normal functioning of hormones, including sex hormones. In this video, I will explain how these man-made chemicals can trick the body to behave like hormones and then interfere in the process of reproduction at different levels by interfering in the function of both male and female hormones. Before I start, I must say that what I'm going to be describing is not commonly understood or known aspect of infertility. infertility. Infertility is a very big topic with many different causes, so if you suspect you are infertile, your first step is to see your doctor, to be referred to a specialist, to look for causes of your infertility. The information here is not medical advice, for that you must see your doctor. So back to the topic of discussion. And that is, what can be done to minimize the effects of endocrine disruptors and what can be done to reduce the effect on your body? Firstly, I would like to explain the terms that I'll be using so we are all clear as to what they mean. If you already know what they mean, please bear with me as I want to make sure we are all on the same page as to what we understand by the terms I'll be using. First is the word hormone. Most people know what a hormone is, but what does it do? Hormones are your body's chemical messengers. Hormone producing organs uh, are called endocrine organs. So for example, ovaries produce estrogen, testes produce testosterone, and the thyroid gland produces a thyroid hormone called thyroxin. These hormones travel by the bloodstream to different locations and affect different functions. Now this part is important to understand so that what I'm going to be talking about soon will make sense. When the hormones get to the cell where they exert their action, they have to bind to the receptor on the target cell. That complex of the hormone bound to the receptor then triggers the hormone action. So for example, estrogen helps stimulate the growth of the egg follicle in the ovary. In the uterus, it enhances and maintains the mucous membrane, and in the breast, it is used in the formation of breast tissue. Testosterone in men is involved in the production of sperm, in increasing muscle mass, and in the regulation of sex drive or libido. So the same hormone on different target tissues produces different functions. All these different areas that the hormones work have to have appropriate hormone receptors. A testosterone receptor is different from an estrogen receptor. Another way to look at it is that the hormone is a specific key and it has a specific lock, the receptor, to get to the cell to unlock the function. So the key, which is the hormone, has to get to the lock, the receptor, and then unlocks the function of the hormone. An endocrine disruptor looks like the original hormone and has a key that is somewhat similar, but not the same as the original hormone. In effect, the endocrine disruptors do what the name implies. They disrupt the hormone function. If they sit on the receptor, then the real hormone can't get to the receptor and so can't function. The rogue chemicals that is the endocrine disruptors, can decrease or minimize the effect of the hormone or vastly increase the effect of the hormone. So where do these endocrine disruptors come from? Endocrine disruptors are synthetic compounds and include solvents, lubricants, plastics, phthalates, pesticides, fungicides, and heavy metals, to name a few. These chemicals enter us through the food chain or the atmosphere and can interfere with functions in the body that are controlled by hormones. In addition to affecting hormonal function, endocrine disruptors also adversely affect the microbiome, the gut microbiome, by, by decreasing friendly bacteria. Overall, these chemicals can decrease the diversity and function of the microbiome, so allowing an increase in unfriendly bacteria that results in dysbiosis. The good news is that the healthy microbiome can also detoxify some endocrine disruptors. More good news is that some probiotics can also bind with and inactivate certain endocrine disruptors. That I'll explain shortly. As the list of endocrine disruptors we are exposed to is very large, it will be impossible to cover them in depth. I am therefore going to focus on three important and common ones that we are faced with daily 
and can have a significant impact on fertility in both males and females. The first has got a tongue-twisting name, so I will name it by its initials, PFAS. There are two within the group. The first is perfluoroalkyl, and the other one is polyfluoroalkyl substances. And as, as I said, PFSAs. PFAS for short. These chemicals are found in commercial household products, including stain and water repellent fabrics, non-stick pans, polishes, waxes, cleaning products, and paints. The non-stick pans are the important uh, for our discussion today. PFAS have been associated with both reproductive and fertility issues in both men and women. In women, the, if exposed to PFAS, has been associated with endometriosis, lower estrogen, lower progesterone, and lower testosterone. In men, it is associated with low sperm count, lower sperm quality, and lower sperm motility, meaning slower moving sperm. The next endocrine disruptor is bisphenol A, also called BPA. This chemical is used in the manufacture of plastics that are used in food and drink packaging, including water bottles. The main source of BPA is diet, but BPA is, is in the environment, in the air, dust, water. BPA can leach into foods from consumer products like resin coatings of canned foods and from food storage containers and water bottles. A major contributor is from checkout receipt, regi register receipts. BPA is found in rivers, sewage treatment plants and water from water treatment plants. Many countries have switched to B bisphenol F and bisphenol S, BPF and BPS, but these are chemicals are similar to BPA, and research shows that they have similar damaging effects to BPA. These products are marketed as BPA-free, and that would be correct, but the problem is the replacement chemicals are no different from the health, in their health effects. In humans, BPA has been associated with impaired reproductive function in men and women. Some studies have shown that men with high concentrations of BPA vary from having decreased sperm concentration and quality to zero sperm. High BPA in women undergoing IVF treatments was related to reduced recovery of eggs. Another study showed BPA concentrations were higher in women diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome, or PCOS. Increased levels of BPA were also associated with the reduced ability to get pregnant. As an aside, all three bisphenols, that's A, F, and C, can disrupt thyroid function as well. And normal thyroid function is very important in pregnancy. The last group are the phthalates. Phthalates are used as plasticizers, that is, substances added to plastics to increase their flexibility and transparency. They are found in food storage containers, including single and reusable water bottles, food wrapping products like lad wrap or cling wrap, children's toys and clothing. They are also used in cosmetics and personal care products. Some of these products are water soluble and can be found in drinking water. They are relatively stable in the environment, meaning that they are not easily broken down to other compounds and so can accumulate in the environment. Most single-use water bottles contain phthalates and do leach out into the water. More leach out with increasing temperature. Common example is a single-use water bottle. These are made of very stuff, soft plastic. The softer the plastic, the more phthalates in it. Heat increases the leaching of the chemical into the water. Leaving a plastic water bottle in a car on a hot day is not a good idea. In fact, buying bottled water is not a good idea. In my mind, the biggest groups of people affected by phthalates are the young adult and professional couples, who depend on Uber Eats. Here, hot food is placed in soft plastic containers and then transported to the destination home. It is often then eaten off the plastic container, or if gone cold, heated again in the microwave. So a second dose of phthalates is released into the food from reheating the plastic container. And this group is mainly in the reproductive age, so fertility can definitely be affected. I have many patients, typically, who live out, live on takeout foods three to four times a week. These chemicals are recognized as toxins to the reproductive system with endocrine disrupting effects in both males and females. In males, sperm concentrations and sperm motility are affected. Testosterone is also decreased. 
Chronic exposure to phthalates is associated with decreased pregnancy rates and increased miscarriages. In midlife women, increased levels of this chemical has been associated with increased hot flushes. Again I say, is it any wonder that infertility rates are increasing at an alarming rate worldwide? It is impossible to avoid these chemicals if you are not aware or not questioning where your food comes from, how it is cooked and how it, is, how it can be contaminated by these various toxins. So what can be done to treat these chemicals? The answer is, it depends. Let me explain. As it is virtually impossible to be completely free of these in urban living, I will go through what can be done practically. Starting with cookware. Switch from non-stick cookware to stainless steel. Getting good stainless steel cook steelware can last you a lifetime. Never ever heat food in microwave in plastic containers. Avoid or minimize having takeout food unless buying cold food as in, as in salads. Depending on where you live and depending on the quality of your town water, you may want to consider installing a reverse osmosis water filter. This method eliminates all chemicals and metals. There's an excellent book that covers a lot more about what I've covered to include creating a non-toxic home, especially if you're considering building a new home or renovating. It also addresses furnishing. Furnish, soft furniture, especially soft furniture, is another source of harmful chemicals as they have to be covered in flame retardant chemicals. The book is called Smart Living, Creating a Healthy Home in an Increasingly Toxic World. I'll have the information in my notes below including the, the link to their website. From a diet point of view, soluble fiber can bind to these toxins. Some of these foods are legumes, oats, flaxseed, uh, to name a few. Broccoli sprouts and green tea can help with the detoxification. I mentioned earlier how probiotics can help. Probiotics like lactobacillus can bind toxin metals to their cell wall and then are eliminated when excreted in a bile action. Fertility is dropping at a rapid rate and there are many factors at play here. What I've covered here is, inform is information not commonly available. Whilst I've covered endocrine disruptors as a contributing factor in fertility, these chemicals that are everywhere are implicated in a lot of other diseases like diabetes and hormone-related cancers and other chronic diseases. If there's enough interest in these in the effect of the, in these other effects of these chemicals, I will do a video on these. So if you're interested, please let me know in the comments below. For now, the measures that I've advised to minimize your exposure to these chemicals is information that everybody should heed. So I invite you to share this information with all your family and friends and colleagues to, to make them also aware of the dangers of these chemicals that are everywhere. What I've described are simple measures anyone can take to minimize and to help remove some endocrine disruptors. In someone, if someone suspects that endocrine disruptors are impacting their fertility, then they need to see a suitably qualified integrative health practitioner. Here, a detailed exposure history has to be taken and a urine test may be done to measure the levels of these toxins in the urine. Then a program can be recommended to treat these issues that involves diet, supplements, detoxification, exercise and possibly saunas to help reduce the toxic load. There are an estimated 80,000 chemicals in the environment. It is a challenge living in this chemical soup. We can't escape them, but by being aware we can minimize our exposure to them. You can make your family and friends more aware by getting this information out to them. So if you found this information useful, please send this video link to them. I am Dr. Igi Suse and I look forward to seeing you in another video.